Well, good morning. It's a nice, nice day today, like 38 degrees, I think. Um, nice and sunny, and I finally got some parts in so we can get this uh, trailer axle repair done. So I got some brand new leaf springs, brand new U-bolts, and brand new grade eight bolts to bolt it all together. Um, you see, the old ones, they were broken. I had to get some new ones so i gotta get these things removed i'm not going to waste my time trying to get these bolts off i'm just going to cut them off with my angle grinder and then uh we'll get to installing the new axle on this trailer flip it over and then i'll have my trailer ready to go for my snowmobiles and a couple other projects i got going on so let's go ahead and get started Junk. Gotta get a new one. Okay, I got the old ones off and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the new ones bolted on right now. I'm using nylon locking nuts here so I don't have to worry about any of the other nonsense with the lock washers and things like that. We'll just get them all bolted on. I should have brought a, a deep socket. Let's try another method. Now this, this is called a slipper slipper hook style of uh, leaf spring and it basically sets it up so that you don't have to have a shackle on this end save some money on some of these cheaper trailers that don't really need to be all that heavy duty but you still want to have them have them strong in my opinion that's why I'm out here fixing a manufacturer's really shoddy construction
Okay, that's good. Now we'll get the axle ready. Okay, so now we got to get the axle ready. And on the springs, there's these pins, these alignment pins that keep your axle square to your trailer. So I got to drill holes on the axle to fit these pins. And I hope I brought the right size. <laughs> I think this will work just fine. So we're going to go ahead and get those holes drilled, get this axle on here and be done with this project. So I already got it marked out. So it should be ready to go. Start with the pilot hole and then go larger. So I found with these step bits, you can you can uh, extend the lifespan of these things, which they're not they're not cheap. I think this one was about 20 bucks. Um, you can extend their lifespan by putting pilot holes where you can. Obviously, there's places where you can't, but if you're able to, I always recommend you put a pilot hole in there. Make your $20 bit last a lot longer. So this little bit I was using for a pallet bit, one of the best drill bits I've ever, ever owned. This is a three millimeter. I bought this in Japan. They have a bunch of grades of drill bits over there. And this one comes in the purple package. And this little sucker costs 10 bucks. And it's phenomenal. I wish I'd bought more before I left that country. I tell you what, good thing I got friends over there. I might need a hookup sometime soon if you're watching. but. Best bit I've ever, ever bought. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Measurements were perfect. Well, you probably see what I did there. That's not gonna work so good. I gotta go find a three quarter end wrench. I should have one somewhere around here. Okay, I found myself an end wrench. So, there's a, really only one way to do this in my book, from what I understand, what I've done before. But with U-bolts, you don't ever want to over tighten this side versus this side you want to evenly tighten them right but now i got a pair of them and this part of the u-bolt is going from one u-bolt to the other so i actually have to go around and what i do is i don't don't follow any crazy pattern from corner to corner to corner like on a when you're doing a tire because you're working on a u-bolt right so I'll do this side a couple turns on each one, then I'll go to this side 
back and forth, back and forth until I got all of them tight. And uh, I could be wrong, but I've done this before and it's worked before in the past. So, and I'm also, I'm not building the Eiffel Tower here, so, but I still need it to be safe and everything pulling evenly and sharing the, the load evenly, as evenly as you can. That way it stays good and safe. These back ones might be a bit of a pickle. But that's the gist of things. Evenly tighten them. And that's the wrong way. Did y'all catch that? It's righty tighty, lefty loosey, not, not lefty tighty. Right now I'm just working on kind of getting them all snug. Then I'll start going around doing my tightening. Then I'm going to drive it about 10 miles to my other property where I got a load of old shingles waiting to go to the dump. And so once I get there, I'll crawl under here and uh, get them all tightened down really good. Is that 10 miles? Of shaking a little bit there I am going the wrong way again at 10 miles of shaking uh, could loosen them up a little bit so I'll bring you all back once I get it all tightened up okay we got it all hooked up on there everything's snug down nice and tight uh, ready for 10 miles of shaking uh, so I can get it torqued down properly and uh, next thing to do is just flip it over and uh, go from there
I was just shock testing the uh, suspension. Make sure we're good. I wasn't expecting that. That chain slipped and she went over, but she looks like she's fine. So I get her hooked up and take her on a road trip. Make sure everything is all the way it should be. Anyway, that's it for part two of this trailer rebuild. I'll see y'all in the next video.